Hi guys, Ross here. I hope you're all having a blessed day. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the same project from the previous video, but this time focusing on the texturing side of things. So I saw all the comments, everyone asking for me to kind of do a breakdown of how I set up the glass and the label. So that's what we're gonna be going over today. I do just want to say quickly before we do jump into the video, thank you so much for all the love and support on the previous video. It really does mean a lot to me. It really inspires and motivates me to keep making these videos, so keep it coming. It really, really does mean a lot. I did see a lot of comments as well, kind of asking me to cover different topics of kind of doing these bottle renders, such as the liquid, how to actually model it, the UV unwrapping, and obviously that's a lot to, for me to cover. So those videos are on the way, but just be patient with me. I do need to do kind of each bit step by step and each section so yeah just bear with me that is on the way keep your eyes peeled for those videos so today we're going to focus on the texturing i'm going to stop waffling now and let's get stuck in so we're in cinema 4d and you can see we have the label set up here um, and essentially i'm just going to break break it down step by step so let's jump straight into the glass material and if you haven't used redshift much before this may look a little bit overwhelming but i promise you I'm gonna try and make as much sense of it as I can as possible. So you can see that the actual label is built into the glass. Um, typically, I'll do the label as a separate object, but in this case, um, it was easier and quicker for me to do the label just in one. Um, and due to kind of deadlines, this made the most sense. So yeah, this is why it looks a little bit crazy. This here is the glass material, and this here is the label material. So we're gonna break both of these down. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. So let's start off with the glass material. So I have this shortcut set up, shift Q, um, which essentially is gonna output this to the surface. But if you don't, all you have to do is just, you know, take your node and just drag this to your surface. And that is gonna show you just what that node is, um, which is really useful for, say, if you created something like a max on noise, I can output this and you know just see it without any lighting or anything else involved. So really, really useful tip there. Um, I do it all the time just to kind of check on different areas of my texturing and help to really finesse those different areas. So we're looking at the glass and I'm actually gonna jump out of this camera just so we can see the whole bottle. I think that makes a bit more sense for this for this part of the video. And you know, let's just disable the kind of neck label and the lid as well. Okay, so we have our glass and you know you can see there's not really many nodes to this. Um, we're using the preset glass and the only thing I changed for this is the refraction color. So based on the client feedback, um, hold on, I'm just gonna actually hide the liquid. That would make even more sense. Uh, so yeah, like I was saying, based on client feedback, they said it had a tiny tint of blue to it. So I just went into the refraction and added 3% of saturation. And you can see even with 3%, it makes quite a bit of difference. Uh, if, you're t if you crank this all the way up, it really does start to get a little bit crazy. Um, and it looks really cool if you're going for that type of look, but obviously I'm trying to keep this as realistic as possible. So just a tiny bit of saturation in there is gonna give you kind of that color that you need. So apart from that, everything else is exactly the same, just the default glass, but the majority of the magic is happening in the bump maps. Now, obviously, like I said earlier in the video, you need to UV unwrap your bottle properly. You need to set up these maps and these textures. So I'm gonna save those for a separate video. But here I'm just gonna show you kind of how they work and how I set them up. So we have our stripes texture. We have our kind of text, oh no. We have our lugs at the bottom, at the base of the bottle. Um, and then we have our text at the bottom of the bottle. And the reason why I isolated these is just so we have more control over the bump of each individual texture. Um, and then we can just feed these into a bump blender. So the way this kind of works, if I just output this um, this final glass bottle here, is you know we plug the texture into a bump map, and we set the height we want. You can see both of these, or all of these have a slightly different bump, um, which is really nice because I can fine tune each one. And then I just plug all of these into the bump blender. So one into the base, one into layer zero, and one into layer one. Now by default, additive mode isn't going to be selected so if I disable that it's just going to show whatever the highest layer is so layer one and then if I hit that one it would show the layer below me so it show the lugs at the bottom and then if I hit that one it would show the stripes now obviously we don't want that we want to be able to see all of them at once and that's what additive mode essentially does it's going to screen them over the top of each other um, if I output this to the surface it's going to look a bit janky but 
you kind of get the idea. If I disabled additive mode, we're only going to see the top layer, whereas we enable it, it's going to screen all of those textures over the top of each other. So this is a really powerful tool. And then you just plug the bump blender into the bump input of your texture. So really useful tool to be able to kind of take multiple textures and feed them all into one. Uh, really, really useful. That way we have more control over each one as well. So if there's some client feedback and they wanted me to kind of tone down one area of the bottle, I'm able to do that without having to recreate that whole texture in Photoshop. So that is it for the glass material. Really, really simple. You know, like I said, the bumps are doing the majority of the work to make this look interesting. Without that, probably wouldn't look as exciting. Now into the thick of it. Um, this is the label setup and I'm going to try and make as much sense of this as possible. So let's zoom into it so we can see a bit more about what's going on and let's isolate this first material here. So this essentially is kind of the base label material. Um, obviously at the moment it's going across the whole bottle which isn't what we want for the final result but I'm going to go through step by step of kind of how this works. So. Essentially, I've created this white material with a 90% white because nothing's ever truly 100% white. And if I did do that, it would look really blown out and just wouldn't look very pretty. So we have that at 90%. We then have 0.4 weight in reflection with 100% white reflection, which is, which is fine. Um, we can just tone down the weight instead. And that's set at the default 1.5 IOR. And then everything else is pretty much the same. Um, we're using a paper texture in the reflection roughness. I believe I found this from the website uh, ccotextures.com, I believe that's what it's called, uh, which is a kind of free to use Creative Commons license website for textures. So check that out, I'll put, it, I'll put that in the description down below. Um, really useful for finding textures. I believe this is where I got it from. I'm like 90% sure. So yeah, <laughs> um, so we have that, we're plugging that into a ramp just to kind of recolor it a tiny bit. Um, this way it makes it a little bit more matte. So essentially reflection roughness um, works on a white to black value, white being a really matte finish and black being really glossy. So if I change this to a black like this and really kind of crank this down and then output that, you're gonna get like a really shiny finish here, which obviously doesn't look correct for a label. Um, so we just remapped that to like a gray color, which gives us this softer finish. But also, um, if I just isolate this area here, it's going to break up the light and really pick up on that texture, which just makes it feel a little bit more realistic. So we've plugged that into the reflection roughness and kind of like we have with the glass, we've used a few different textures and a bump blender to then add in these additional details. Now, the first one is just a cutout of this label. And what this is doing is adding this kind of shadow and this depth along the outside of the label. Uh, you can see without this, if I just kind of turned it off, you know, we don't get any of that depth. And realistically, if you look at a glass bottle, there is a little bit of separation and a little bit of depth to that label. So this just helps to kind of simulate that. Um, and we're not actually blurring this texture because we want it to have a really harsh result. If we blurred it, it would kind of look like it was part of the glass bottle, which obviously it's not, it's been like wrapped onto it. Um, so this just helps to simulate that depth. We then have the same paper texture, but as a normal map, um, this again is just helping to kind of make that texture more prominent and make that label look more realistic. And then finally, we have these stripes along the bottom, which were part of the label design. And all of these are plugged into a bump map the exact same setup as the glass material and then in a bump blender with additive mode and that gives us kind of the base layer for our label. Uh, now obviously we're missing the black and the gold text so let's kind of run through about how I set those up. So we've created this black material here and you can see that I forgot to turn off the UV mesh in the texture uh, but that's fine because we're going to be cutting that out anyway. Um, but essentially what I've done here is I've created a black and white texture of the text, um, just the black text, and slightly blurred it, which is going to give us a nice kind of beveled finish to the text. Um, so it looks like it's actually kind of embossed into the paper. We then output this and, you know, everything's pretty default. Um, we have this kind of dark black color with a slightly 
a, with a slight bit of saturation. Um, the client said it had kind of like a yellowish tone to it. So I just pumped a little bit of saturation into that to add a little bit of color. Um, just makes it a little bit more interesting. And that is it for the black text. And then we have the gold text. So similar kind of setup. We've created this black and white texture here with this gold text and, you know, just blurred it a tiny bit. Now I probably could have done a similar thing as to the previous ones where I separate the different elements out into different textures, but I think this worked as it was. So I just kept it all as one texture, uh, plug that into the bump, plug that into the material. And for this one, I did bump the IOR up. So this just makes the reflections a bit more shiny. You can see if I bring this down, they're a bit duller. Um, and obviously we did want this to be like a really nice gold glossy finish to the text. So just bumped up the IOR on that slightly. And then what we've done is we've created a material blender for this, for this label. So if I just kind of run through step by step on how this is working, hopefully it will make sense. So let's just kind of organize this a tiny bit. Okay, so essentially what we have here is our final label. Obviously it's still taking up the whole bottle, but we'll, we'll get back to fixing that in a minute. Um, so what we're doing is plugging in our base label here into the base color. And you know what, let's just, let's just get rid of all this so I can kind of show you step by step. So we got our base label, we have our black text, and we have our gold text. And what I've also done then is create created alphas for both of these. So uh, we have this alpha here for the black text and then an alpha for the gold text. So these are essentially the same as the bump textures, but without any blur. So you can see that's the blurred one for the bump. And then this is the alpha mask. And that's just to make sure we get a nice sharp finish on that cutout. Um, otherwise it might look a bit rough and it will kind of be missing certain areas based on how blurry it is. So we have our base label here. Then we're gonna add our black text by just clicking and dragging and adding that to layer color one. Now by default, nothing is gonna happen and that's because the blend color is set to black. Now, if we change this to white to make it visible, kind of like how you'd use a layer mask in Photoshop, it's gonna add it over the top, but obviously now it's covering up the, the layer below. Now we could use additive and you would think that would work, but because it's all black, you know, it's gonna add the embossing or like the bump, but we're not getting the color of the, the text. So what we need to use here is, you know, we need to use our own custom kind of texture, which is what we've created here, which is gonna take the black and white values to essentially cut out areas of this material. So if we just go back to the material blender, and this time we're going to add this into our blend color, and voila, it's cut out the black text for us, but we're keeping the nice label underneath it. We're then essentially going to just do the same for this gold text. So plug this into layer two color and then plug in the texture into layer two blend color. And now we have the gold text. So this is essentially how I would create these kind of label materials or any kind of material where you need to layer different things on top of each other. Use the material blender and then create alpha masks to be able to cut out certain aspects of each material. So hopefully that makes sense. Obviously now we're missing the glass. So the final step is to create another material blender, plug the glass texture into the base color, then add our label into layer color one. And then we're gonna use this final cutout here, which is gonna cut out the label from the glass. Um, because we have that really nice kind of bump on this texture over here, we're getting a little bit of a shadow here. Um, and it's just adding a little bit of depth to it. So that essentially is the setup for the label and for the glass. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I don't think I really need to go through the rest of it because um, the neck label and the lid follow the same principles of using like a material blender and textures to kind of dial in that detail. The only thing I will go over is the liquid quickly. Um, so let me just enable that. And you know, here's a little bonus for people that have watched this far into the video. This is the model from a front view. Um, you can see there's a little bit of thickness here. Uh, hold on, let me just hide the liquid. Little bit of thickness to the glass here, which is gonna give you, you know, more realistic reflections and refractions. And then when it comes to creating your liquid, you want it to intersect into that wall ever so slightly. Obviously this isn't physically accurate, but for render engines and for 3D software, this is the best way and the most accurate way for it to kind of um, calculate 
the liquid refractions and reflections in the glass. So just make sure you intersect that liquid ever so slightly. And obviously there's a lot more to it than just this. Um, so like I said earlier, there'll be separate videos for that on the way. Um, but that is how you would set up your liquid. Just make sure it intersects the glass ever so slightly. So let's have a look at the material and then I think we'll be done and dusted. So let's just open this up. And to be honest, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I've used the water preset, but the only thing I've done is I've created this ramp here for the refraction color. Um, so if I just isolate that, you can see it has this yellowish tone and then it fades to like a whiter tone towards the top. Um, obviously this isn't again physically accurate, but based on client feedback, they said, you know, this is how it should look. So it should kind of fade away as it goes to the top. Um, so that's what I did. And then I used the same ramp, but in black and white for the opacity. So essentially near the top, the liquid's actually going to fade away. So then you start to get some of the blue glass come through. And then when we output that, this is the final result. So we get this nice kind of yellowish color and then it fades to the blue bottle towards the top. Um, if you didn't want to use a ramp and, and didn't want to use the opacity, you could get rid of both of these. And to change the color, all you need to do is come into the refraction and transmission color and just plug it in here. Just plug in whatever color you'd like. Um, you can see we get pretty much the same result, but now we're missing kind of that gradient towards the top. So yeah, that's just those those two nodes. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and yeah, like I said, the label and the lid, they follow the same principles as the glass using material blenders. So I don't think I really need to cover those. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Um, there was a lot of requests for this one. So I'm hoping I've kind of covered everything you guys want me to. Like I mentioned, there's still loads more aspects to these bottle renders. So I'm going to be bringing something out soon to kind of cover all of that. So just be patient with me and keep your eyes peeled for those videos. But if you did find this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below. It really, really does mean a lot to me. And thank you again for watching. And until next time, peace.